is Rick and Sasha with George Wilborn. Listen, when I think of a younger Marvin Gaye, I cannot mm-hmm. help to think about this brother right here. Sasha, please do the honors, and I hope that didn't offend him, y'all. Please. I'm just saying he is. <laughs> I'm just saying he's just right. Believe, and when he came up with that song about that strong woman, oh yes, that needs to be our theme song right now about strong woman. I'm talking about Raheem Devon. Hey, Yay! boo! Yay! When you wrote that song, Strong Woman, because I got to tell you, so oftentimes women, black women are just beat down. That right there was so uplifting to us. Thank you, baby. Where did that come from, boo? Um, honestly, mm. I, honestly that, 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 that song um, came from me being challenged by, by an A&R at the time who I walked into the label thinking that my second album, my sophomore album, Love Behind the Melody was done. Mm-hmm. And with A&R at the time, um, who goes by the name of Jeff Finster. Um, shout out to Jeff. We, um, we became great friends after that. You know, I haven't spoken to him in a minute, but that 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 one conversation changed, changed the trajectory of how I approach a project. Like when I put out a project mm-hmm. and asking myself moving forward, like, is this album really done? Like before I turn it in, you know what I mean, and and mm-hmm. and, and it allowed me to be humble and it put me in a place of, of humility and being humble right. enough to be able to have those conversations when somebody says, "Hey, like the album is great, but I don't think it's done yet." Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. do you have this maybe in the can, or can you go create this? And um, at the time, you know, he was just like done, like. Where where's this? Where's your where's your you know where's your where's this record? That and one of the things he said that day was like, where's your you? He was like, where's your you? And I think what he was saying and um by saying that to me was that he was basically asking me, where's that record that where all the women feel like that one song is about them? And mm. after that conversation and probably within seventy two hours, I went to the, I went back to the crib from New York to D.C. Got with Chucky Thompson. And um and 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 the, and the, and the song "Woman" was was you know was written you know I wrote, I wrote it and vocally arranged it and you know the creative process happens rather quickly I don't write stuff down physically and stuff like that I've heard of, I've heard of there a few other people industry wise that that work like that like Tupac Jay Z um, you know R and B singers we don't really mention anymore for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Let me yep. ask you, man. I mean, that that you know, that moment did it truly just change the entire tra- trajectory of what you were doing? Because oftentimes, when we when we say to ourselves, "This is who I am, and this is what I do," and someone steps in and say, "Well, you should you should speak to this audience in this way," how long did it take you to 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 feel that, receive that, and, and know it, and move in that direction? Um, yeah, I mean, it was needed. You know what I'm saying? I think as an artist, it, it, it really showed me um, the importance of having an A&R. At that right. point, I, up to that point, you know, I, I, I had A&Rs, but I kind of like the first album, my quote unquote, the demo was what is what was the album. Like, you know what I mean? Like I got signed off of um, the Love Experience album. Like, you know, 90, 99% of that record was done. The only records that I recorded for that album after I did the deal with Job at, the, at that time was probably uh, the actual title track song, which was the Love Experience. Okay. But the, yeah, the records were already written, produced. You know, it just needed to be mixed and mastered. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, so I was coming from a place of like doing it on my own, pretty much anyway, and and it being accepted. You know, and and Job always had at the time that you know, artists. Um, they had some of the biggest names in the business, you know what I'm saying? Like at that time, um, the, the the biggest R&B name in the business, um, you know, the biggest pop names in the business, the biggest hip hop names in the business. And most of those artists were self-contained, you know, you know what I mean? And come from being in the building, I would hear stories where like, you know, some of, some of the artists wouldn't even turn the album, you know, you wouldn't get the album until they wanted you to have the album or until it was done. And then they come in and the presentation of it is already done. You know, so they really were used to working with artists that were self-contained. But um, from that conversation and from that experience, it was a learning process of that. Even though you can be self-contained, does not mean that um, that you don't still need a team or or, or that a, 
opinions don't matter. Right. You know, what I mean? like it's a, you know it's about valuing um, valuing the right opinion. You know, you and you take it with a grain of salt. You take the things that you feel like can can apply to your greatness and be better. You take those things and you apply it. Um, and, the, and 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 the things you feel like don't apply to you, cool. You know what I mean. You don't take it personal. But um, I I left that conversation not taking it personal and feeling like, you know, it worked out. You know, Woman was my first number one record. Had I not had I not had that conversation and more important and more importantly humbled myself from the conversation, that number one would have never been existed. It would have would have never existed. Ironically, it was number one for a whole summer. Um, yeah. <laughs> um neck and neck with Jai. Right. With who? With Jai. Who? <laughs> We don't want to talk about no Jaheim here, okay? Nah, <laughs> we, don't, we don't talk about him, man. This gonna, this not, hey, that let me ask you something. Have yeah. you, Go ahead, have you, have you, have you ever considered yourself a style? Are you, you know, like a R&B or a neo soul? You know, people always, you know, categorize artists. What, did, what do you see yourself as? Oh, funny you say that. Like initially coming out the gate, when you listen to the Love Experience album, really, it's a lot of different elements there. There's rock influences there with records like Cadillac and Who. Um, there's definitely a, a, a socially conscious um, uh, um, layer there in terms of records like Who, Catch 22, Love Experience, um, uh, Until, which was the first single. You know, I talked about a lot of different things on that record um, that were, you know, that, that were personal and dear to me and, and my struggle. You know, until you know my pain, know my no no. You know my struggle until you walk in my shoes, pay my dues. You only know what you think you know, you know. Um, and then there was the element of intimacy and love, and you know, and, and, and sexuality. You know what I'm saying? Mm. All rolled in one. So I knew out the gate for somebody who was not a music lover or was kind of closed minded, it could it could be perceived like I'm all over the place. You know what I mean? Although I felt mm. like it was a solid body of work. And the play, and, you know, I'm big on playlists and making sure you put the right song behind the right song and right. the input here to bridge it together for the for those that you know um, that might not you feel like might not get it, right? Um, mm -hmm. um, I that that's where the title R&B hippie neo soul rock star came from. So like, you don't recommend people put any of your music on shuffle at all? No, 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 I'm not saying that. You can definitely, you could you could definitely put on shuffle. Yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, great music is great music. You know what I mean? I, right. I, I myself and making bodies of work. So at the end of the day, you can't put it on shuffle. But I, but I, but, but in terms of um, when you when you get the album for the first time, right? It, I hope that you can put it in and listen to it from beginning. Just let it go without having to, yeah, without having to flip through it. Especially, you know, what I'm saying if you're in go mode, you're in go mode. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm over 50, so it's kind of, you know. <laughs> he is slow-mo. <laughs> all depends on the day, man. All depends on the day, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I call it the late list. So I definitely like to, let, I, I definitely like to have, uh, uh, um, you know, in the, in the spirit of, like, Jodeci or um, the first Jodeci, first couple of Jodeci albums or Boys to Men, like, I'm a, like, I always purposely like to have those at least five to six slow songs back to back you know what i'm saying gotcha. but, you know for those that are 50 and over you know i don't know what that <laughs> listen i i don't know what it is about raheem this man right here can walk down the street and every woman is like turning just looking at him he just has this every swag woman, every he just has this swag about him just person that i don't know what it is raheem what is who are you what type of man are you You're so sensual i mean we want to know um, I mean, the last time I sat with you, boo, we was she, having one on one conversation. on that dress. She's so sensual. Sensual. <laughs> and I'm serious. I was having a one on one with Raheem. We kicking it. I put my. So feet I should keep up. your hands on your shoulders. Let's right? make sure you. Uh... <laughs> that's that's that's. Funny. I mean, it's funny you say that because I feel like I feel like me and you, me and you, Sasha. I feel like you from, we from the same tribe. You definitely yep. have very infectious and sensual. This, this, um, I know a couple of interviews we did. The hormones were kind of like you know, no, dis no disrespect to you know what I'm saying. You better have. Hey, she ain't my woman. <laughs> no, no, he's not talking about you he, He's talking about oh, my oh, husband. Oh, oh, and no disrespect oh. to his his girl, okay? But it was just a connection. Pheromones and energy don't 
you know what I'm saying? I, at the end of the day, I guess to answer your question, like I'm energy. I'm in, I'm in tune with my energy. I'm in tune with my um. So so, what might come off, you know what I'm saying, to a woman like or they, when they feel that energy is this. There's a level of um, there's a level of of comfort of, of comfortability that I have. Yeah. And with myself, um, in in terms of loving myself, there's a um, there's a level of um. I've I've found a, a level of uh, of of confidence, you know yeah. what I'm saying, in myself, and I had to I like and I you know be honest, I had to grow into that, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying. Even 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 um. F- fun fact, right? I I just started loving the way I sound on records. Really? Yeah, I'm being you know completely be completely transparent, and that doesn't mean that that I haven't ever given my all or whatever, but I'm in a place where um. Where sonically, I understand my instrument better. I understand um, the creative process of it um, from being from it being so repetitious and being in the studio so much, and you know, so it, so it's almost like it, 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 it's 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 um it's very like my my creative process is very improvisational because I don't physically write things down. I'm kind of I kind of mm-hmm. freestyle, I guess you could say, kind of writer. And I understand that that doesn't necessarily come from me, but more so through me, and um, and it makes it it makes it it makes it fun, it makes it a, a, an adventure, and um, and you know so and, and and confidence is a very big part of um, I think I think women um, and men we are attracted to um, you know confidence of a woman, you know what I'm saying like whether she plus size or petite or. or you know, wear her hair in a weave or natural. It's just something about when you can tell where there's a level of confidence when a woman Absolutely. Is, or where a man is confident about themselves and like yeah. confident in their skin. So I think that that's what probably, you know, is is, is what um, what you might have been feeling, baby, you know? <laughs> and you was feeling it too, boo. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know we can we can definitely say it is is men. I mean, you you have an aura and a, and an energy about yourself, man. Where when you when you walk into a room, you um you command respect without demanding respect. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you don't have to say you know here I am. This is what I do. It's just what it is, baby. It is what it is. You know, take me as I am, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a um, you know, it's, it's a vibe, man. And at the end of the day, it's just it's just energy. And you, you you can feel when the energy ain't right. You can feel when the energy is good. You know what I'm saying? And um, and it's I mean I mean you know I tune into your show to you guys often. You know when I'm in town and stuff like that. I, I, it's it's chemistry, man. You can't. It's, it's not. Man, something- there's no doubt about it. You know, it coming it coming from as a comedian, man. I I say maybe some shows. 70% of my show is that I call it working without a net where, you know, I'm just, you know, confident that whatever's on my mind and I'm vibing with the audience they connect with. And sometimes you're right. That's just the most fun that you can have it because people know that it's happening right there in real time, you know, and you get the gratification of that. So and from artist to artist to know that you, you know, you write like that and you do your songs like that. And many artists do, but that can't be taught in my, in my opinion, that's something that uh, God gives you and, and you can perfect, but you can't, you can't pass that on and pass that down to another artist and say, Hey, do it like that. In, in my opinion. So kudos to you for that. All right. Now listen up here. I know y'all get ready to get into some other stuff and kudos to that too, but I had a, emails from women cause they knew you was going to be on the show and they needed me to ask you some questions. Okay. So here's a couple of these questions at night, pajamas or naked, which is it? I mean, I, 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 I I'm a naked kind of guy. Ooh. Okay. Your favorite love song, your all time favorite love song. Oh man. Favorite love song. Um, yeah. Um, Soon, 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 I'll be loving you, Marvin Gaye. Ooh, do you remember that first, that first kiss that did something to you? You ain't gotta say her name, but do you remember that kiss? Oh yeah. yeah. What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it, man. Don't answer. Don't answer. <laughs> the last question they wanted to know: How long can you go? I can go as long as I need to go. Like I'm in. The- Ow! Okay, y'all can go on with the music. Go ahead. That's all I need to know. Can you give us the name of the of the of the listeners who wanted to know the questions? They didn't leave their name. Her name is Sasha. Go on. Yeah. See, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and 
like Kama Sutra and, and you know what I'm saying, tantric and retention and all that. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? That's just all mental. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to like intimacy, like, you know what I mean? That's some magic, bro. You could. I feel like the best experiences is not based on how long you can go. It's based on. It's based on just on when y'all connect, you know what I'm saying? When y'all, when, when you, when you, when you can, when you got that right spiritual connection, the physical is unlimited. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of like that pheromone, that organic connection. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, y'all go yeah. ahead because I just. That's what I do. I, I put the stopwatch on their ass and I go, boom, connect, connect, fucking connect. Ah, uh, there we go. Connected. I hope your ass connected. We're done. <laughs> okay, hey, Raheem, that's why. what you what you on now, man? What we need to know about, bro? Mr. Midnight. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the so the new single, um, there's a few singles that I've dropped over the last uh, you know, few weeks and, and, and months. Um the kickoff single was Marvin used to say, which was a, a record, um a, tri- a record dedicated to Mar you know, paying homage to Marvin Gaye, but also speaking to um the social climate or what's going on right now. So that's been out. That's been a sing. That's a single that's been out the longest. Um, there's a video coming for that at some point as well. It's already in the can. I think that that song is going to probably just continue to have like new life, you know, um, based, you know, with black history month coming up with the climate of what's going on in the world. And, and, and I just felt like that was a, the appropriate thing to do um, for my platform. What I'm known for doing with my brand. Um, the follow-up single was Mr. Midnight, which dropped on October 30th. It was going crazy on the on the streams. Um, you know, um, it's, it's terrestrial radio is, is jumping on board on it as well. So we're gonna um, we haven't even officially officially went for ads yet, but the, uh, you know we expect that it's gonna be it's gonna do extremely well at radio uh, as well as you know satellite radio and, and the DSPs digital platforms. Um, Twilight just dropped on November 13th. It, that un- unlocked um, in anticipation for the album. And the album, What a Time to Be in Love, will be out officially midnight Thursday, midnight Friday morning. Roll it over in the fr- a Friday uh, Friday morning, um, you know, in the a.m. Um, after after midnight uh, Thursday, you can you, you you have full access to the album digitally. I want to give a big shout out to the colleagues, my uh, my brother KP. Um, the colleagues who produced the entire body of work. I want to give a shout out to all the producers um, that were involved in the co-production of the project as well. Um, I wrote probably, I wrote like 99% of the album. Um, you know, Marvin, Marvin used to say, which is the first single, was a, was a record that I co-wrote on. Um, so I want to, you know, shout out to those brothers in North Carolina, Loverboy Vo and Desperados and Mike Blaze. And um, I think it's some of my best work to date was, 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 uh, unique about this album is this is the first project I've ever put out was was entirely produced by, you know, one producer per se. You know, I mean, we involved other people in the creative process, but it's pretty much like, you know, KP of uh, of the colleagues, you know, oversaw um, the the production side of it, and um, it's a solid body of work, man. You know, it's about celebrating our blackness. It's about staying in tune with our um our conscious side but 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 also it's about you know it's it's the it's for it's for the it's we locked down man so you know if you're gonna be locked down you might as be get you know make make love not war oh right man say it again you you need to do what I I make love. calm down love yes make family. love yes child Oof. that's what it's about honey you got war going on in your <laughs> This is a time that you know either people are coming together or you're going apart. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's it is what it is. But um, yeah. You know, whatever the process, be thankful for it. I just want to continue to push the narrative of us loving our blackness and loving on each other and procreating and and um uh, and, and and all of that. You know. Absolutely. Smash. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, George. <laughs> so I go ahead and close it out. I hey, we will continue to support you. You keep pumping out the great music. You stay just how you are. This is why women like me and around the world love you, Raheem Devon. All right. Hey, the fellas love him too, man. Come okay, on, man. I'll do. Okay. Oh, on, <laughs> love you, yeah. Raheem. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Y'all as well. Thank you for we having. We love him in a different way, but we still love him. <laughs> <laughs>
you be strong in who you are, man. It's all right to love a brother, man. Come Tell on, you man. love him, George. Just say I love you. Damn. As I said, we love him in a different way. I'll be in the car listening to him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, baby. We're here to always support you. All right, love. love. I appreciate I appreciate y'all as well. Um, just a gentle reminder: you can hit me on all platforms: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, Clubhouse. I'm on there as well. So uh, it's all good, man. I appreciate y'all for your platform. Thank y'all so much for supporting me as always. And I look forward to when we can get together and do it in person. Stay healthy, stay safe, and stay no black. No doubt. My man, My man, Raheem Devon, y'all. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Love, boy. Yes. Right. Love. Love.